Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
praise to you, Lord Christ. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. And then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. And then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood, weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I want to extend a sincere word of welcome as we gather in community on this very special day. It has been quite a year, so once again I want to take a moment to extend the warmth, the love, and the care of this parish family to you all. On this journey, we never need to go it alone. We are here for one another. The beloved community, a sign and expression of resurrection love. So if you are hurting, if you are lost, or you just want to grow in your faith, always know that we are here for you. If you have not done so already, at the conclusion of this service, I invite you to make your Easter offering online at chtwestport.org. Thank you in advance for your faithfulness and your generosity. So if you are watching this service, you are praying with us from the safety of home. In addition to this digital worship offering, this Easter, we will also be gathering in person. And when we do gather physically, know that we will be keeping it safe, keeping it distanced, and keeping it short. Of course, the challenge for the preacher is also to keep the sermon short. No small challenge on a day of solemnity such as this. How to cram the power and mystery of Easter into a few well-chosen words. Well, actually, it's been done before. In fact, the very first Easter sermon ever was no more than five words, five gorgeous words, 
I have seen the Lord. They were preached, of course, by the first ever Easter Sunday preacher, Mary Magdalene. For me, Mary is always the preacher on Easter morning. When you think about it, her presence in the pulpit is a bit of a, an unexpected surprise. After all, Mary has no seminary training, no big steeple congregation. Heck, she doesn't have a pulpit at all. In fact, she's not a religious leader at all, not officially. She's not numbered among the 12. She is just someone who loved and followed Jesus. Mary, Mary was a woman with a past. Seven demons possessed her, seven. I mean, how much can one person bear? That's enough torment, disease, and chronic pain for an entire neighborhood. We can only guess what that must have been like for her. Did she wander through town, like talking to herself? Did she show up in line at Starbucks and put people on edge? Was it opioids or prescription meds? Was it chronic medical pain? Who knows what demons tortured Mary? What we do know is this, the power and the love of Jesus turned all that around. He cast them out, all of them. She has been restored. Still, when we hear her name, we don't say, that's the follower of Jesus who delivered the first ever Easter sermon. We say, ah, that's Mary. She's the one Jesus cast seven demons from. Apparently she's better, but you know, just in case, better watch out. Yet, it is Mary, with her heart full of courage and love, that steps forth on her own, as Jesus says, through the shadows of Good Friday and makes her way to the graveyard. Those official followers of Jesus, the 12 disciples, the men who always had a front row seat to everything Jesus did and said, where are they on Easter morning? Locked away, afraid, hiding, playing it safe. Oh, Jesus will get them moving soon enough, but today they're hunkering down. Oh, they got the hint, crucifixion, is not only a means of execution, it is a tool of intimidation. Step one foot out of line and we'll crush you too. Desecrate your body. Your mothers will have to watch and your friends will scatter. But grief is a form of resistance. Mary shows us that. She gets up early in the morning, goes right to the place where they buried Jesus, and she weeps. She weeps out loud in public. Mary is not afraid. She shows up, steps out. She has gone looking for Jesus, and she will leave no stone unturned until she finds him. And she hangs tight, just as everything in the graveyard is about to get weird. Stone rolled away, tomb empty, heavenly apparitions yammering, and super bizarre, unexpected plot twist, Jesus is alive, he is risen. Who can blame Mary for wanting to throw her arms around him, hold him close? Hug him tight. But no, Mary cannot own Jesus no more than any one of us can. Jesus is on the loose in the world. Mary is called to go. Go tell everyone all about it. And that is what she does. Oh, to see the face of the twelve as she flings wide those locked doors in Reveille. Come on, boys, wake up. The Lord is risen. 
The Lord is risen indeed. Can I get an Alleluia? We could spend weeks or months or even all our lives reflecting together on the theological complexities of resurrection, the power this day unleashes. And well we should, and well we must, but today we simply need to pay attention, pay attention to Mary, this uncredentialed woman with a past, seven demons, who some have overlooked she has seen the Lord, and apparently in ways we haven't, because we were thinking about our own survival and stayed home. But thank God she went looking for Jesus and found him and came to tell us all. At the threshold of betrayal, destruction, fear, and death, Mary stands firm and says, no, no. Mary sounds the trumpet, reawakening us all to the power of resurrection love. On this day, love has the final word. Love prevails. Amen. Can I get an Alleluia? Alleluia. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? the Son of God. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the Apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, I will with God's help. help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I, I will, will with God's, God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> the peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and also with you. you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. 
By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with the whole company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many, so that sins may be forgiven. Whenever you drink this, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O God, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Holy gifts for God's holy people. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. 
in union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful throughout the world and at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are offered this day. We long to offer you praise and thanksgiving. We believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. And since we cannot at this time receive communion, we pray you to come into our hearts. We unite ourselves with you and embrace you with all of our hearts, our souls, and our minds. Let nothing separate us from you. And let us serve you in this life until by your grace we come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. Amen. Bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forevermore. Amen. Amen.
peace to love and serve the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.